One second. Yes? Hello, Chekhov. My name is Flux. Someone killed a man last night. The same man you wanted dead. Do you hear that? Drumming? A beat? You need to leave now. No. No. I can hear its glorious beating. Open the door, Scootai. Hello, Scootai. My name is Chekhov. What's going on here, Bjork? My name is Skutai. You look nervous. Very, very dreadfully nervous. Shh. Do you hear that beating? Hello, Marx. My name is Bjork. Do you hear that beating?
You have to leave now. Now. You have to get out. Are you okay? What? I think I hear a beating. No. No, don't. What do we have here, Odysseus? What? My name is... <laughs> you are a sick man. Is this what you've become? You have mental issues, Charlie. Charlie? Yes. Yes, Charlie. Go ahead. Kill yourself. But I, I didn't mean to. But you did. Stop. Yes. Do it. Stop. Do it. Stop! You ruined it. He was barefoot in the McBain 3 hallway. It was odd, but Francine had seen Stranger. Hookah spoke in the halls, her next door neighbor's inflatable ball pit, the weird kid who left his door open while napping. 
Francine had to admit that there was something about the way his perfectly manicured toenails ricocheted off the matted, mouse-dropping infested carpet. The rumors were true. A Shiba Inu named Jean-Luc indeed resided in McBain Hall. Francine looked forward to his infrequent sachets, though the orange brows that sat atop his black fur, like band-aids on raver girls' nipples at hard summer, seemed to indicate a perpetual unfamiliarity between the two. Still, each time he appeared, she beckoned her roommate Miriam to join her in shrieking at a frequency only he could hear. They dog-whistled that he was such a good boy. One night, Francine attended a birthday bash on McBain 5. She was standing with her CC classmates when she heard the familiar clinking of a dog tag. Francine looked at Jean-Luc's human and, with eyes akin to the Sheba's when he begged for begging strips, asked if she could walk him sometime. The human remarked that Jean-Luc was going through an independent phase. He would choose who he walked with. More painful than accidentally unmuting herself in class. More upsetting than the celebrity Imagine video. Francine's separation from Jean-Luc broke her. And though they remain separated, Francine dreams of Jean-Luc, of strolling through Riverside Park and telling him what a good boy he will always be. So it did feel a little bit like none of them fully felt like they were like
How can I help you? I thought Max is bleeding. Oh no, what happened to the poor guy? You saw what happened to you? Um, he cut himself in the backyard. On some glass, I think. No problem, we can help you with that. Um, are you still at the same address that we have on file? Uh, yeah. Okay. You can fill this out for me. You know how long it's gonna take? Um, it should be pretty quick, kid. Ain't rush hour as you can see. <laughs> Um, don't worry, we will take very good care of them. Thank you very much. I'll go check and see if Dr. Wright is in yet. Oh, okay. Thanks. Thanks. Stay. Come on. Okay, great. Thank you. Someone will be at C-Max in just a few minutes. Bathroom? Oh, sweet to look. Almost ready. I'll be really quick. 
Yeah, go ahead. Don't be long. in the restroom. What was that? I just gave her pen back. Good? Yeah. Look at me. If something's wrong, you need to tell me. Okay? I'm fine. Good. You three can step back here and we'll get you all taken care of. It's been pen in business a lot lately. The thing with Ted. What about it? About starting it up, getting things going. That's great. It's gonna happen. I feel good about it. Annoying me. I'm not. Yes, you are. You don't even. You don't even support me. I do support you, Sam. I, I I really hope you can make it work. You don't think I can do this, do you? You can do it. It's just gonna take time and. You don't think I know that? Sam. What? Is all about? No, Sam. Your job at the bank. You think you're smarter than me? Answer me. Do you think you're better than me? Tell me. No, I don't think that. That's what I thought. They won't be much longer. I'm gonna go ask. Come on. Sam, just a few more minutes. I need a smoke, Courtney. They can call us when they're done. Sam, stay here. I'm not asking. No. What did you say? No. You see it. Sir, what? Put your hands above your head now. What did you do? Don't move. Checking. Got it. Let's go. Let's go.
Hey mom, I was wondering how you've been. How's everyone doing? I haven't heard your voice in a while, but、um, I just wanted to say that I love you and I miss you so much. Talk to you soon, okay? I once heard that homesickness is like getting into cold water. It feels uncomfortable at first, but then the body starts slowly adjusting to it with time. Weird that it's snowing in space. Don't worry about that, Jennifer. Come on, I need some help with these decorations. What? Help you put up a Christmas tree? Do I look like a child? Don't be like that, Jem. Look, everyone's getting ready for the holidays. I'm wearing the ugliest Christmas sweater I could find. I built a dreidel powered by perpetual motion. Dang it. Well, 
Make all the merry you want, but leave me out of it. I haven't celebrated your stupid little holiday since I was a little girl, and I don't intend to start again now. But I already got you a present. What part of don't do you imbeciles not understand? Ugh, what is it now? Gasp! Mr. President! Yes, it is I, the President of Space. To what do I owe this honor, Mr. President? Captain Pendleton, you and your crew have been selected to embark on a dangerous mission that could very well determine the fate of the universe. We have received reports from agents in the past that a secret and nefarious entity has traveled back in time and stolen Christmas. What? Like, literally stolen Christmas? How is that even possible? Your mission is to go back in time and put an end to this menace before Christmas is cancelled forever. I'm sorry, I'm still a little confused. Good luck, Captain Pendleton. The universe is counting on you. Well, well, well. Looks like somebody is going to be spreading a little Christmas cheer this year after all. Shut up or you're going out the airlock. Pilot, you heard the president. Take us back in time. Yeah, sure. Whatever. If my calculations are correct, these should be the coordinates where the temporal anomalies began. Wait a minute. I know this place. This was my childhood home. That's neat. Anyway, I think we should spread out and look for anything suspicious. Guys, who wants to help me finish the snowman? Get lost, Jimmy. It's Jemifer. Guess it's just you and me, Mr. Snowman. <sighs> What's the matter, little girl? It's just... it's Christmas Eve. Nobody wants to build a snowman with me. Well, maybe I could help you? <gasps> You really mean it? Sure. I mean, I suppose it is Christmas after all, isn't it? Aw, oh, jeez. Thanks, mister. Hmm. According to this data, the source of the temporal anomaly must be somewhere behind this giant robot. <laughs> Dr. Galactic, so you're the one behind all this. At last you found my secret lair. Allow me to explain my evil plan. Once I activate this giant robot, it shall suck all the Christmas spirit out of the world and launch it into space. Then the world will plunge into darkness and chaos, and I will rule supreme. And the best part is, none of you can... Wait, weren't there three of you? Oh, buttons! Wait, no! And finished! It's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. You know, I'm starting to feel something funny inside. It almost feels like a kind of warmth. No, it's gone. Well, gang, we did it. We saved Christmas. Curse you, space people. I'll get you next time. <gasps> he was a ghost the whole time. No, I think he just teleported. Oh, yeah. That makes more sense. So, Jennifer, did you finally learn the true meaning of Christmas? What? No! What does that have to do with anything? <laughs>